بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى آله وصحبه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد فأهلا وسهلا ومرحبا بكم إلى لقاء جديد Welcome, welcome to our weekly lessons. Last week we discussed belief in the last day we were on the pillars of your Iman. The pillars of Iman, we discussed the belief in the last day where we touched a few things uh, in regards to uh, the definition of uh, what we mean by the uh, believing in the, the last day and uh, its significance the trials in the grave, the questioning in the grave, those are the things that we discussed last week. So today we continue from where we left. We would like to start by discussing the, uh, the ruh, the spirit, which is uh, also called the soul. So uh, let's start by the soul's attachment to the body. In this world, the soul follows the body. In the Barzakh, the body follows the soul. And in the Akhira, life after death, the body, I mean the soul will be with the body. So we should pay attention to the fact that in the life of the Barzakh, life of the bar Barzakh is the counterpart of the life of the year after. So meaning to say, its meaning is known, but its manner is not known. Allah knows best how it is there in the Barzakh. It is something that the mind is uh, confused about, but does not mean that it does not exist. It does not mean that it's impossible. Talking about the, the spirit, the soul is from the world of the, the unseen. The spirit is from the world of the unseen. Its nature is known, as we said, but flows from the, through the body and gives it life. Life, its movement is ascending and descending. It is not there, which means it's death. The soul is one of Allah's creatures, managed and loved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it's being attributed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is for an act of nobility and uh, honor only. But it is created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is a creature of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he loves it. Death of the soul occurs uh, when it departs from the body. We are told in the Holy Quran, Kullu nafsun ikatul maut, which means uh, whenever the soul departs, the body or leaves the body, so the body dies. It doesn't degenerate the way the body degenerates. It remains in a, in a stable state, state, but in a different way. Let's look now the places of souls. The souls of the prophets, whenever they die, where do they go? The souls of the prophets are in the Eliyin, the highest rank in Jannah, called Eliyin. That is the, the, the highest place in Jannah, in the place under the Arsh of Ar Rahman. The, then the souls of the martyrs, the Shuhada, their souls, they are said to live in the, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put their souls in the, in the bodies of birds, green birds in Jannah. Green birds in Jannah, they will be roaming in Jannah wherever they want. So that's the place of the souls of the, the Shuhada, the martyrs. As for the rest of the believers, their souls are in paradise. For the, uh, the non-believers, their souls are in, in hell. Uh, that's in regards to the, the, the places where the souls go after death. So the minor and major signs of the last day. We are still talking about the last day. Uh, the other time we uh, gave different names to the Yawmul Qiyama or Yawmul Akhir. Yawmul Akhir, we said the last day, the hour, one of the names is, is the hour. There are some signs in regards to the last day. As we heard from that hadith of, uh, the long hadith of Jibreel alayhi salam, where he was asking Rasulullah some, some questions and uh, read where he was asking about the, the, the hour, Asa'a. That Akhbiruna Nisa'a, Jibrail is asking the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that tell me about the hour, the last day. The, then he says, Mal Mas'ula Anha bi Alamamina Mina Sail. Person being questioned is not more knowledgeable than the one who's asking. Jibrail went on to ask him that, okay, tell me its signs. If you do not know 
the real time of the hour, then you should tell me its signs, what are the signs. So he went on to uh, mention some of the, uh, the signs. Signs are divided into minor and major. So the signs of the hour, uh, they precede the last day. The minor signs of the, uh, the, 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 of the hour, they precede the, the last day, indicating its proximity, that now the Kiyama is now near, or the day of judgment is now near. So we look into those signs. So whenever a person dies, his Kiyama has started. His Kiyama has started. So, in fact, the Asatul Asa Kubra, it is the resurrection of people from their graves for, for reckoning. The biggest uh, Sa'a, or the major Sa'a, the biggest hour, is when the people are resurrected from their graves for, for reckoning. That is the, the, uh, that's, that's according to the uh, to the Quran. Almighty Allah uh, said, yes, that they ask you for guidance about the, the hour, meaning about resurrection. They ask you about resurrection. So this one is always, I mean, when, when, when the Quran is talking about uh, the sa'a, the hour, is talking about the bigger one. It's talking about the bigger one. So anyway, there are minor, so many minor signs of, uh, of the hour. Here we'll just mention just but uh, a few. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, Bu'itu ana wa sa'a kahataini. Bu'itu ana wa sa'a kahataini. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he was asked about the nearness of the uh, of the hour, that how will we, we know about the hour, the Sahaba were asking, they wanted to know when will it okay. So he told them that Ana was which means me and the hour, we are like this. He pointed with the index finger and the middle finger, I mean, uh, putting them together like this, that no, we, we are like, just like clothes, that from the time that I've been sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, and the time of Kiyama is, I mean, this is too close, too near, the way these two fingers are. That's how uh, so close Kiyama is. So, uh, what are the minor signs of the minor signs of Kiyama? The minor signs of the Kiyama, number one, is the mission of the Prophethood. I mean, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The coming of the Prophet Sallallahu it has already occurred that Rasulullah was, was sent and now, I mean, uh, that's one of the signs of, of, of Qiyamah. One of the signs of Qiyamah, that's why he said that hadith that I, I mentioned, that uh, me and the, uh, the hour, we are just like this. The other sign of the, the Sa'a is the splitting of the moon. That one also, according to hadith, it has already occurred that one day Rasulullah was seated with the Sahaba when the moon was split into two. One was like on top of the uh, on, on top of the hill, and then the other one on the on the valley. So the splitting of the the moon. This is one of the signs of Kiyama. Then the emergence of temptations on the. Uh, uh, the emergence of temptations, that there will be a lot of temptation in the world. So that one was, is already also occurring. So on the authority of Abu Huraira, the Allah Ta'ala Anhu, uh, that the Messenger of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, uh, peace and blessings be upon him, said, hasten to, to do deeds, hasten to do deeds, for the temptations are like the passage of the dark, uh, dark night, a man wakes up a believer in the morning, and in the evening he is an unbeliever. Or else, in the evening he is a believer and wakes up following an unbeliever. He wakes up an unbeliever. So, he sells his religion as, a, as an offer of the world. So, Rasulullah in this hadith was warning people that, you know, 
be uh, very, very cautious of temptations. Time shall come that a man will wake up uh, a believer at the end of the day is a, uh, is a non-believer, or else he will uh, spend the whole day a believer and then sleeps and wakes up a non-believer and sells his, 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 his religion for, for the life of this world. So the other sign of the, uh, of the hour is uh, lofty buildings, that the barefoot, the naked, the destitute, uh, the shepherds will be competing in constructing buildings. They will be competing in constructing buildings. That is what uh, Rasulullah said also in the hadith, that hadith of Jibreel alayhi salam, that this, uh, you wouldn't expect that they will be wealthy or will become wealthy in such a way that they will be uh, competing in building uh, lofty buildings, building beautiful houses or building, building beautiful uh, buildings. Then uh, the other sign will be the loss of knowledge and the frequent earthquakes and killings that uh, towards the end of the hour, uh, knowledge will become, people will become less knowledgeable. Uh, we are talking about Dini here. They will become less knowledgeable and uh, there will be frequent earthquakes and then uh, there will be a lot of killing. These things are already uh, occurring. Uh, Rasulullah saw some said in the in one of the hadith la taqumu sahatta yuqbadu al-ilm wa takthur wa takthur al-zalazil wa yataqarabu al-zaman wa tadhhar al-fitan wa yakthur al-haraj wa huwa al-qatl al-qatl that Rasulullah saw some said uh, the hour will not occur until uh, knowledge is seized from people but after Zala Zero, and then there will be a lot of earthquakes. Where Taka Rabu Zaman and time will be so close to each other. Time is so close. And now, if you look at it, also this is already occurring that no time is becoming too short. Too short. And we, as we, uh, the way we say it, that we say uh, seasons are changing. Seasons are changing. So uh, time is moving fast. But other hard of and then the appearance of a lot of fitna temptations. There's a lot of temptations that's taking place these days. These days, the legalization of some things that you wouldn't expect the people to like legalize such things that are becoming legal. And then there's a lot of fitna taking place. And then there's a lot of killing of one another. There are a lot of wars taking place. People are dying. So those are the signs, minor signs of the, uh, in short, these are some of the minor uh, signs of the hour. Now, uh, let's now talk about the major signs of the, of the hour. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, قَالَ إِنَّهَا لَن تَقُومَ السَّاءَ إِنَّهَا لَن تَقُومَ حَتَّى تَرَوْنَا قَبْلَهَا أَشْرًا أَشْرَ آيَاتٍ in a hadith, he was talking about the hour that he verily it will never occur unless you see uh, ten signs. So, which means uh, the signs, the major signs of the kiyama uh, of the hour are ten. So he mentioned them. He went on to mention them. And that first of all, adokhan, which means the smoke. There's no time to talk about them in details. I'll just say. Uh, talk about some of them in detail. That's number one, smoke. The smoke is a major sign of the smoke will appear. Then Dajjal. Dajjal, this is Antichrist, Masih Dajjal. He's called Masih Dajjal because he's uh, the Messiah of uh, uh, misguidance. He's the Messiah of misguidance. So Dajjal, who is Dajjal? Dajjal is a, a single-eyed man in another narration, it is said that no, he's called Masih because one of Masih is to wipe. Is, I mean, one of his uh, eyes, particularly or maybe specifically, the right eye is obliterated. Is uh, is is not there. He uses only the left eye. He has one eye, a single-eyed uh, being. So this Dajjal, uh, he will come and cause a lot of fitna. 
be someone who will be claiming divinity, he will be claiming also prophethood, he will be saying he is a prophet, the other time he is saying he is, he is God, he should be worshipped. But anyway, he will be trying to convince people by the miracles that he will be performing, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given him, uh, I mean, uh, gave him some powers to perform some miracles like causing rain, causing the land to become green with the uh, crops and uh, vegetation and uh, also some circumstances he would like even kill a boy and then raise him back alive. alive. So he is, he is a fitna, a very big fitna that there is no fitna uh, that has ever occurred in the world except the fitna of Dajjal. Because the, 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 all the Ambiya have warned against him, including more specifically our Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has warned against Dajjal. And he has eight people also to pray against uh, Dajjal. Uh, against Dajjal. Because uh, this Dajjal, his appearance, that he will appear from the east, Kharusan. From the east, that's where he will appear from. Then he will be moving at a terrific speed. And he, with his miracles, he will be convincing non believers to follow him. He will be having a, a very big following. Whoever shall be tempted, tempted and I mean, actually, on his, in between his eyes is written kafir. Kafir in broken uh, letters, Arabic broken white letters, kafir. So the Muslims, everyone, the one who an educated or an educated or uneducated, will be able to read that. So uh, he will be a very, very, very big temptation in his movement. Uh, he will move everywhere in the world except in Makkah and Medina. Because Makkah and Medina, it is said that it will be prot is protected by the by the angels. So there he won't be able to uh, to reach that place. So. His appearance denotes the nearness of, of Kiyama. The one who will come and get rid of him is Isa, salam. Jesus, salam, is the one who will come and kill him. Yes. Uh, the third one will be the animal, a daba, animal. This daba that also, I mean, the Allah. When corruption, there will be a lot of corruption in the world, such that you know, this animal, when it is sent by Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, it will be talking actually, trying to prevent those people, warn people from the, uh, committing uh, those crimes or uh, corruption, com uh, committing, uh, I mean, causing corruption in the world. So it will be talking as that one will be a miracle of that uh, of that animal. So number four. <clears throat> the raising of the sun from the west. Normal circumstances, we know that the, the sun raises from the east. But that particular time when uh, Kiyama is approaching or the hour is approaching, the sun will raise from, from the west. Then number five, the descent of Isa, the coming of Isa ibn Maryam, peace be upon him, he will come. We know according to Islam that Isa, alayhi salam, according to, to, to the Qur'an, that uh, he was never killed. The Qur'an refused that. Say, وَمَا قَتَلُوهُ وَمَا صَلَبُوهُ وَلَكِنْ شُبِّهَ لَهُمْ Then in another hadha, رَفَعُ Allah And Allah raised him to, uh, to heaven alive. Uh, that they never killed him, nor crucified him, but it was made to appear as if they had killed him. But in actual fact, they never killed him. They never killed him. So he was raised, he's still alive. As a human being, as I said in the earlier ayah, that Kullu nafsun ikatul maut, that every soul shall test death. So Isa was a human being, so he will come back to test death. So his advent, is coming back, he will come and like, uh, uh, he will be come and destroy the, the cross. He will destroy the cross and he will be following the Sharia of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He's not coming with a new Sharia. He will come and follow the Sharia of Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and he will be the one to kill the uh, to kill Dajjal. He will be the one to kill Dajjal. So that's about Isa alayhi salam. So his coming means uh, Kiyama is near, or the, 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 the hour is near. 
then the appearance of Gog and Magog. So Yajuj and Majuj. This also we, there is a story of Yajuj and Majuj in the Holy Quran that these people were very, very troublesome. These are human beings that they were given a lot of power, very, very powerful by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They were very, very powerful human beings and then they caused commotion whereby uh, people asked the Karun that, you know, I mean, they asked the what, this one to get rid of them. So he built a, a wall, a building like, I mean, to block them from, uh, from people. So when the tower is uh, approaching these people, they will be able to come out. They will be able to come out. That wall will have uh, uh, been broken and then they come out. They will cause also uh, commotion. Their end is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will destroy them by, uh, through the dua, the prayers of Isa alayhi salam. Isa and his following, they will pray uh, against them, then Allah will send, uh, but uh, will destroy them, Ajuj and uh, Majuj. Then uh, number seven is the three eclipses. That towards the hour, there will be three eclipses. Eclipse in the east, that's one, and then the eclipse in the west. Then the eclipse in the Arabian Peninsula. There will be three eclipses. And the last of that is fire, which will emerge from Yemen. It will expel people to their place of gathering. Ila mahshar, mahsharihim. But this place of mahshar, this mahshar is, uh, is not the, the mahshar of the day of judgment. The gathering of the day of judgment is the a place of gathering in this world, in this dunya. Uh, that people are divided, will be divided into, 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 into three. The third group, the, the, the group of unbelievers, will be driven by, by fire. Will be driven by fire to the place of uh, gathering. Ten signs, the ten major signs of, of the hour. So what do we gain by uh, the benefits? What are the benefits of believing in the signs of, of the hour? Number one, believing in the last day, uh, or believing in the last day, that it is true and real and it's a reminder. This one will help us to believe that really the last day is something that is true and it's real and also it's a reminder for to us to keep our eggs together, to put our eggs together. It is also a belief in the unseen. A belief in the unseen is an act of Iman. It's an act of Iman, and that's real Iman, to believe in the, in the unseen. Whenever you believe after seeing, then that one is not Iman. That is not Iman. Number three, uh, it will help us also to act according to Sharia and act correctly. People will be able to act according to Sharia that, you know, really, uh, Chiyama is coming. They remind us, those reminders will be showing us that really Chiyama is coming and Chiyama won't be easy. The one has to prepare fully for that particular day. So it also in strengthens our iman in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It strengthens our iman in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because we will be seeing what has been foretold, what he has mentioned that no, when you see these things happening really in conformity with what has been mentioned, then our iman and faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, becomes stronger. It's also evidence of, uh, of the prophethood of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because he foretold them. Foretelling something that will come, come to okay or the, uh, come to pass, which means he is a true messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because he wouldn't have known if it was not Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who, uh, who has informed him. Also satisfies our natural awe in a right way. Satisfies our natural, natural beliefs as human beings, you know, uh, all these things, they satisfy us, satisfy our inner beings. It, is, it keeps us optimistic about uh, the day of, uh, the last day of meeting our Lord. 
Last of all is uh, the preparation for the day of judgment. It helps us prepare for the uh, day of judgment. Now, let's talk about resurrection, al-ba'ath, ba'ath, resurrection. That's one of Allah said in the Holy Quran, afahsibtum annama khalaqnakum abathan wa annakum ilayna la turja'oon al-mu'minun 115 afahsibtum annama khalaqnakum abathan wa annakum ilayna la turja'oon did you think that we created you in vain and that to us you will not be returned? Another verse. أَيَحْسَبُ الْإِنسَانُ أَيُّ تُرَكَ صُدَى That uh, uh, does, this is Qiyama, uh, in Surah Al-Qiyama, verse 36. Does man think that he will be left neglected, that to no end without responsibility or without being returned to the Creator for judgment? No, all these ayats, there are so many ayats anyway, uh, that talks about resurrection, that uh, uh, as a human being, do you think that you are created just to in vain? That uh, when you die, the way other, the atheists, they always claim that there will be, there's no life after death that do you think that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, with all his wisdom, with all his knowledge, uh, he will create you just in vain and neglect you and leave you like that and think, I mean, uh, there will be no judgment, that you will behave the way you want and there will be no judgment. So uh, this is a question that is uh, uh, trying to tell people that no, it's impossible that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will create people in vain for no reason, for no apparent reason. So what is the resurrection? Resurrection is actually Allah's, uh, one of Allah's justice and wisdom. And reason also. So we are told in one of the ayahs also, Qala Ta'ala, زَعَمَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا أَلَّا يُبْعَثُوا قُلْ بَلَا وَرَبِّي لَتُبْعَثُنَّ ثُمَّ لَتُنَبَّعُنَّ بِمَا عَمِلْتُمْ وَذَلِكَ عَلَى اللَّهِ يَسِيرٌ التَّغَابٌ verse 7 Those who disbelieve have claimed that they will never be resurrected. Say yes by my Lord, you will surely be resurrected. Then you will surely be informed of what you did. And that for Allah is easy. Disbelievers, they disbelieve that no there will be no resurrection. But here now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is confirming that really it's true that you will be resurrected and you will be informed about your dealings in this world. Whatever you've been doing in this world is recorded and you'll be informed about it. You'll be informed about it. So we have also so many uh, proofs from the Holy Quran about resurrection. So existence and appearance there is nothing more evident of uh, the possibility of a thing than its existence. If something exists, then that's, which means it's evident that that thing is there. So in the Holy Quran, we are told Allah is saying, in the Holy Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, وَإِذْ قُلْتُمْ يَا مُوسَى لَنْ نُؤْمِنَ لَكَ حَتَّى نَرَى اللَّهَ جَهْرَةً فَأَخَذَتْكُمُ الصَّائِقَةُ وَأَنْتُمْ تَنْظُرُونَ ثُمَّ بَعَثَنَاكُمْ مِنْ بَعْدِ مَوْتِكُمْ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ Al-Baqara 55-56 And recall when you said, O oh Moses, we will never believe in you until we see Allah outright. So the thunderbolt took you while you were looking on. Then we revived you after your death that perhaps you, you will be grateful. So in this verse, uh, the people of Musa, they said, no, you are talking about your Lord. You're talking about your Lord. Why don't you show us? Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, destroyed them actually by that. But then he revived them to show that, no, Allah, uh, Allah is there. So that shows that no resurrection is really there. There are so many arguments in the Holy Quran 
in another verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is arguing. For example, basically we can say surah to the, towards the end of surah to Yasin, people are asking that, no, uh, we will, will we be raised after we have perished? We will be raised that, no, the one who created you, who created you, what would make him uh, unable to, to raise you? If he created you from nothing, what would make him what in fact he either in fact he has created something bigger than than you he created what the heavens and the earth so that is bigger what about something simple like raising you only so i mean there are so many arguments in the holy quran in regards proving to those who uh who deny resurrection that no resurrection is really true resurrection is really true so the subject is very, very long, so I wish to stop here today and then continue to have a third session of it, of the same topic, inshallah.